The first example in this chapter on ratios is example B in the text, and it says that the Harry, price of a Harry Potter book on Amazon.com is 10 bucks. And then it says the same book is also available used for 650, and we need to find two ways to compare the prices. So obviously one way would be just to compare the prices directly. Uh, if the new one is ten dollars, ten dollars, and the used one is 650, we could just subtract them. Ten dollars minus six dollars and fifty cents is three dollars and fifty cents. So we could say that the used book is three dollars and fifty cents less than the new one. Or, so that's one way, or we could use a ratio. If we set up a ratio, we'd be comparing the price of the new book, ten dollars, to the price of the used book, six fifty. So we'd be comparing a uh, thousand, well, ten point zero zero to six point five, which would be the same as comparing a hundred to sixty five. So those would be the same. Then that would be the same if we reduced by five. That'd be the same as saying twenty compared to thirteen, which means that um, really the new book is almost twice as much as the old book. Because if it was 20 compared to 10, it would be exactly twice. So then we could say, in this case, that the new book is nearly twice the cost of the old. And that gives us two different ways to compare the information. Well, here's a question you probably haven't thought about recently. A tournament-sized shuffleboard table measures 30 inches wide by 14 feet long. Compare the length of the table to its width and express the answer as a ratio. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I thought about shuffleboard tables. But you know, it's a perfectly good way to examine ratios. So if we say, uh, if we just compare the length to the width directly, if we say that the length is 14 feet, so 14 feet long, and the width is 30 inches, 30 inches wide, then that's compared. I mean, those, those are compared to each other, so we've technically done the, the compare the length of the table to the width part. But that doesn't really mean a whole lot. I don't, I don't really tend to think of feet and inches in the same breath, usually. I, I want to convert one to the other so it makes more sense to me. Um, just knowing that it's 14 feet long and 30 inches wide doesn't give me a very good picture in my head. So if I convert one of these to the other units, say in this case we'll convert feet to inches, um, 14 feet would be the same as 168 inches. Then I could express this part in inches and compare them a little more, a little more like apples to apples, I guess. So then we would say that the length on top then would be 168 inches long compared to 30 inches wide, now it makes a little more sense. Now we can see, you know, obviously it's a lot longer than it is wide. But if we reduce this fraction, I think it'll make even more sense. So 168 and 30, that reduces to 28 over 5. Yeah. So 28 over 5. So now it's 28. The, the ratio is 28 to 5. So it would be the same comparison as if it was 28 inches over 5 inches. And that tells us that the shuffleboard, if it's 28 to 5, then it's a little more than 5 times as long up here as it is wide down here. So we could actually then say that the board, the board is approximately 5 and a half times, times, there we go, as long as it is wide. And that really makes more sense. Now we can really kind of get a picture for how it compares because we tend to think of those ratios pretty cleanly when they're in the same units.